Hello everyone. Okay, I'm going to get into the lesson for this week, um, week of September 19th. Lesson number three for this quarter. Um, the title of our lesson is the Day of Atonement. The lesson text is Leviticus 16, chapter 16, verses 1 through 16. And our golden text reads, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, that he die not. For I will, I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Um, and we have two outlines. For, um, the first outline is preparing to offer the sacrifice. And that's Leviticus um, chapter 16, verses 1 through 10. And the second outline is offering the sacrifice. And that's um, Leviticus chapter 16, verses 11 through 16. I'm going to whisper a word of prayer, and then we're going to um, get into the lesson. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Thank you for letting us see another day which we've never seen before. In a day which we will never see again. God, help us to make the best of this day that we be bring glory to your name. Lord, I pray that this lesson touches each and every one of our hearts that we understand that we must bring holy sacrifices to you, which is our lives, God. They must be holy sacrifices. I pray that you continue to be with each and every one of us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, um, preparing to offer the sacrifice. I'm going to read you the first 10 verses of the 16th chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two, of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with the young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with um, a linen girdle and with linen mitre, 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 mitre shall he be attired these are holy garments therefore he shall wash his flesh in water and he shall put them on and he shall then take on the congregation of the children of israel two two kids of goats for sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering and aaron shall um, offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and to make an atonement for himself and for his house and he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon two goats, um, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the, I'm sorry, and Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord, Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and let him go um, for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So here we're, we're um, on the day of atonement. This is the day that, um, that we're going to be learning about today, which is the day of atonement. And we're going to, um, this is the instructions that God gave to Moses. Now this was after the death of Aaron's two sons and we, um, saw that in the last lesson um so this so now god is is speaking to moses and he is telling moses specifically um what he wants aaron to do so aaron has to follow this specifically um to you know exactly what god wants him to do so i'm going to start off um just a little bit um about and we're going to learn about the day of atonement i know you know you might wonder what the day of atonement is for and atonement um, we're going to learn what that is in scripture. One of the most important themes throughout scripture is atonement. In order to, in order for sinful man to come before a holy and righteous God, our sins must be removed. Now, I want you to remember that word. Remember that statement, sins must be removed. And that's what we're going to learn in this day of atonement is that the sins must be removed. But um, this is the, in order for a sinful man to come before a holy and righteous God, their sins have to be removed. Otherwise, it is impossible for us to even communicate with God. So if the sins aren't removed, it is impossible for us to even communicate with God. So we need to think about that with our lives, with the sins in our lives. 
if those sins are not removed, we cannot even communicate with God. And that, that's, that's something real serious. And we need to take it very serious. Since God's holiness allows, he, uh, God's holiness disallows for, he doesn't have tolerance for any sin. And that's what we must remember. He doesn't have tolerance for any sin. Um, sin is so serious. Um, and God loves us so much. And he wants us to be with him that God would set a day to atone for our sins so that we can be for him and that's a loving god who i mean who would take time to love someone enough to say i want them to be able to come to me and this is the loving god um that we have so i'm going to read the introduction here from the lesson one of the most important things through our scripture is atonement which refers to the reconciliation of sinners to god okay in order for sinful humans to come before a holy and righteous God, our sins must be paid for, okay? The sacrificial system under the Mosaic Covenant con provided a way of reconciling the people of Israel to their God. It was, the on it was only through atonement that they could be forgiven and be able to receive his blessings. Jesus Christ came to provide the ultimate, final, and permanent atonement for our sins in a way that abolished the old sacrificial system because you know in the old system they had to bring the bulls the goats the you know they had to sacrifice the animals so when jesus christ came um it was a permanent atonement for our sins in a way that abolished that old system this week's lesson shows how um god initiated the day of atonement the holiest day on the jewish calendar it reminded Israel of their sin and need for salvation. It pointed them to the God who alone provides forgiveness and salvation. Provided a means of forgiveness through faith in the Lord and prepare, prepared them for the coming of their Messiah. And here we see that's a loving God who would um, initiate a day um, to set aside, to atone, to reconcile us you know back to god because you know we were separated from god sin separates us from god so when sin entered into the world we were separated from god so now we have to be reconciled back to god so now we have our sins have to be atoned we have to have an atonement for our sins okay um we know that this came um after the death of of aaron's two sons with who apparently offered the lord's they apparently offered the lord um it wasn't um good fire that they offered him nadab and abahu had presumptuously presumptuously offered profane fire in the lord's presence and they were consumed by the fire that came forth from the lord immediately following this god instituted a day of atonement um it's a loving god so instead of god saying okay next you come and if you don't do it i'm gonna kill you no god knows the heart of man he knows our sinful nature so instead of him um allowing that to continue to happen he said he set aside a day of atonement for us god's command to aaron not um to come into his holy place beyond the veil may be indication that it may be indication that's what he just say it may be it may be indication that they have in the bayou attempted to enter it because you know they were not supposed to go into the presence of god they, they just were not supposed to do that so we don't know if they entered into um you know entered in, entered in into the holy place um that's what's presumed that happened we don't know but they were not allowed in there in order to prevent such a tragedy from happening again god instructed aaron not to enter into the holy of holies at just any time you can't just do that you just can't do what you want to do at any time he and he um god instructed aaron not to enter into the holy of holies at any time for he did so because if he did so he would die so god god is we just serve an awesome god there's so many um ways that god saves us and rescues us from things that can kill us and we know that the number one thing that can kill us is sin you know we continue in sin continue in sin continue in sin to a point to where see him you know to take us out but god um is just such a loving god that he will keep us from hurting ourselves so he did this so that so that aaron wouldn't die so up to this point all priestly activities had um taken place outside the most holy place so that was up to this point all the priestly activities whatever the priest did they did it outside 
um, of the holy place. The time had come, however, for God to call Aaron, the high priest, into the most um, into the most holy place, where sin would be atoned for. You know, this is where the um, um, the ark of the, the ark of the covenant was, and so um, and you know where the ark of, wherever the ark of the covenant, that's where God's presence is. Aaron was permitted into the Lord's direct presence in in the holy place, but only only after following very stringent instructions. Okay, so we know the instructions. When you read verses 1 through 10, you know he, he knew exactly what to do. He knew when not to come in. He knew what to wear. He knew exactly what God told him to do. And that's what he had to follow it to the T. He could not do it his way. He had to follow it to the T in order um, for him to hit, for, in order for him to be able to um, come in and, and bring the sacrifices, and for him to be that one. He had to bring along with him a bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. These were um, for the purpose of cleansing both himself and the people of their sins. Also, Aaron had to clothe himself with the holy, holy um, vestments in his office as high priest before going into a holy place. He had to wear the holy linen tunic, the linen pants tied with a linen sash, around his waist and the linen, linen turban on his head so he had to wear certain things and i know a lot of times we talk about how we dress when we come to church well one thing um the way we present ourselves before the lord is very important so how we dress when we do come to church and when we do come before the lord it's very important um it was it was that important that he wear certain clothing in order for this process to be done in a complete obedient way before putting these garments on Aaron had to wash himself thoroughly most likely by immersion when serving in in the outer court um, at the altar the high priest only had to wash his hands and his feet with water that came from the holy basin so that time they only had to do their hands and feet but this time he had to completely immerse his entire body um, in washing in his, his entire body um, entering entering the presence of God beyond the barrier of the temple veil however meant that he had to wash his entire body and that's what I was just saying after washing himself and dressing in the holy garments Aaron was to bring two male goats from the people for a sin for I'm sorry from the people for a sin offering as well as a ram for a burnt offering the bull was to be used as a sacrifice to atone for Aaron's own personal sins, as well as those in his in his family, in his immediate family, in his family. Um, here's an important distinction between the priestly ministries of Aaron and Jesus. We well, we know the distinct. Um, we know that Jesus was without sin. We know Jesus was perfect. Aaron was not perfect. He's a sinful man, so of course he had to. Um, he couldn't give his life because because the only man that could give his life had to be a perfect man and the only perfect man was jesus and so we know that there is an important distinction between um their priestly ministries um although he served as high priest aaron was still a sinner before he could offer an atoning sacrifice for the people he had to first offer um a sacrifice to atone for his own sins so he had to offer a sacrifice for his own sins so sin is real serious because this is a lot um sin is serious and he had to bring in the bull that was for his own um his own for his own sins first and then he had to come in and bring the other sacrifice for the people but christ did not need to offer that a sacrifice on his own behalf because he is not a sinner he offered he was a sacrifice on our behalf but he didn't need to offer sacrifice on his own behalf because christ Jesus Christ is not a sinner. So that's the distinction. The sacrifice of Jesus had permanently atoned for the sins of all who believe in him. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you've confessed your sins to the Lord. You confess that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You believe that God um, sent his son to come and die for our sins. You believe that he raised him on the third day and he died He died, and he justified us. You, you believe that. So he permanently atoned for the sins of all of those who believe in him the two goats were bought were to be bought to the entrance of the tabernacle showing that they were dedicated to the lord alone through the casting of sacred lots god alone not aaron would decide 
um, what role each goat would play. So the lot that fell, the one that fell um, on the one, the one, one of the goats would be presented before the Lord as an atoning sacrifice, and then there was one that would be used as a scapegoat. Okay, so the the atoning sacrifice was the one that was um, atoned for our sins, but then there was that was the one that would um, the sacrifice for our sins, but the scapegoat was the one that would actually um, the the sins would be removed. Okay, the um, one of the goats would be pretty much um, your sins are forgiven. But the scapegoat meant that your sins were removed, okay? Sacrificing a goat to atone for the sins of the people was not sufficient in and of itself to rid the nation of sin. Sin also had to be banished from the community, which is why the second goat or the scapegoat was necessary, was needed, okay? It, it ceremonially carried, carried their sins into the wilderness, okay? So that, that when it was sent into the wilderness, so it pretty much carried their sins and it... um. It carried their sins, which which took them away. They banished. It banished the sins. Okay? So that's what um, the first, the 1 through 10, um, the first outline, which is preparing to offer the sacrifice. So this is what, what, Aaron, what Aaron did to prepare to offer the sacrifice. So now we're going to see um, in verses, the last verses 11 through 16 is where he actually offers the sacrifice. Okay? So I'm going to read verse verses 11 through 16 and Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil and he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil um and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the um mercy seat and before the mercy seat so this is all offering this is all the sacrifice offering and he shall make an atonement for the holy places because of the uncleanness uncleanliness of the children of israel and because of their um, transgression and all their sins and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation, congregation, I'm sorry, that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Um, I'm going to just skip. I'm going to go back, but I'm just going to just, I just thought of something um, with this verse 16. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. Just put our names here. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of of God, us. Um, the atonement that Jesus made um, was the sinning away of sins, was the forgiveness of sins, was the complete sinning away of sins, was what Jesus did for us. So um, that's the sacrifice that he did for us. So here we're going to see the offering of the sacrifices um, that Aaron had to do for the, for the people and also for himself to atone for our sins remember this is the day of atonement this was the day that god um used to um forgive sin and also to banish or do away with it or just completely it's, it it went away now remember now now we can't get too ahead of ourselves and think that we can just keep sinning and god will forgive because god is a forgiving god no that first of all that's unfair god is a forgiving god he's a loving god but we should love him enough to want to do right he loves us enough to want us to be with him so why can't we love him enough to just do right that's all he asks of us just to be obedient and he made god made provision he made ways for for his for the people i mean people are so desperately wicked but yet and still we have a loving god that still wants even those people if if you know because god can save anybody you know we look at people as people that can't be but god can save anybody so 
This is a day that God set aside atoning for the sins of the people. And when Christ came, that's what he did for us. Christ died. Christ, um, we were reconciled through Jesus Christ's blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So now verses 11 through 16, I'm going to go through that. So um, the atoning sacrifice began with Aaron's, Aaron's sacrifice of the bull for his own sins and those of his family. He cannot effectively offer sacrifices for the nation as long as his sins remained um, unatoned for. So he could not offer any sacrifices. If his sins weren't atoned for, he could not offer sacrifices for no one else. Aaron and, and his descendants were never free from sin. Just like we're, we're not free from sin because we're in a, we have a sinful nature. And it's sad to say, but it's just what we do. We sin. And like Aaron and his descendants were, descendants were never free from sin, we're not free from sin, but Jesus did come and die for our sins. So we are free to live the obedient life, but it's, it's a choice. So they required continual, so now because they were never free from sin, they required continual atoning sacrifices. So they had to continue to do this. Jesus Christ, um, by complete contrast, he did it once and he did it for all. Here, Aaron had to keep doing it until because Christ hadn't come and Christ has not had not atoned for the sins. But now Christ had come and he's atoned for all of our sins. So by complete contrast, Christ never sinned. And we know that he is our complete, great and ultimate high priest who represents us before God now and forever. After sacrificing the bull, Aaron then took a censer full of burning coals from the fire of the Lord which was found at the altar. This was significant since Nahab and Abihu had previously taken fire from another source. So you know that was wrong. So um, Aaron, he took, he took a censer full of the burning coals from the fire of the Lord, okay? But his sons took, got that fire from somewhere else, which was totally against what God wanted them to do and told them to do. Um, and they offered it to the to the Lord, and they offered that that strange fire. That's why they call it strange fire. Um, and they offered that strange fire to the Lord, and and they died immediately. You know, God is a gracious God because they sinned, and because of their sin, they died immediately. But God is so gracious that He doesn't wipe us out. You know, right in our sin, He gives us a chance. To get it right he gives us an opportunity to repent and get it right we need to repent and turn we we need to get it together time is running out got to get it together the censor was taken before the lord in, in the most holy place where it provided smoke that covered the mercy seat because the mercy seat was covered because you know that's where the, the presence of, of of god was the resulting smoke cloud served as protection for aaron okay um Preventing him from actually seeing the presence of the Lord. Because remember, you cannot see see God and live. So Aaron was, in, you know, the, wherever the mercy seat was, the um, Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, you know, that's where the presence of God is. God is so awesome that he still provides ways for us to to be protected. He protected Aaron. He, um, that's where the smoke cloud was to serve as it served as protection for Aaron and God protects us each and every day God he oh God he protects us thank you Lord since the Lord's presence hovered above the mercy seat Aaron needed something to shield him from being exposed to the glory of God which would have resulted in his death that's deep the mercy seat was the lid that rested on the top of the Ark of the Covenant and inside the Ark were items okay that were were holy reminders of God's covenant miracles the manna that fed israel during their wilderness wanderings the stone tablets that moses had wrote the ten commandments on that the um the ten commandments were engraved and aaron's staff that budded um as a sign that aaron's tribe was god's choice for the priesthood so these are the things that were um um inside uh the mercy seat the mercy seat that was so the lid of the mercy seat so these were the things that were inside of the mercy seat so now so the next step in the atonement ritual was to sacrifice the goat that had been designated by god as the sin offering for the people so you remember they had the sin offering for the people so we, we had one 
that was the offering for the forgiveness of sins but we also had the the second one which was the the, the um the doing away of which is removing the sins okay the sacrifice of the goat of this goat pointed towards the sacrifice of jesus this particular goat um it was from the people it was it was from the people of israel just as jesus was from israel it was chosen by god so god chose this okay it was chosen by god just as jesus was chosen by god the goat's blood was taken to the most holy place at the tabernacle at the tabernacle for atonement Jesus' blood was offered on the altar of the most holy place in heaven, securing an eternal atonement for all who believe in him. It's awesome. So here we see that um, this was the day of atonement. We saw the preparing to offer the sacrifice, the things that Aaron had to do to prepare. There was um, He had to wash himself. He had to wear certain... Um, garments certain things he had to wear so these were the things that he had to do to prepare for the sacrifice so then we saw the actual sacrifice that he did um, it's gonna go a little ways into the expositor and just read a little bit um, I'm gonna just read a little bit the principle of our lesson is to learn crucial aspects of atonement and forgiveness in order to gain a greater appreciation for God's holiness and mercy. So hopefully this lesson taught um, the crucial aspects of atonement and what atonement is about. Atonement is the reconciliation um, of us being brought back together with God because we know we cannot be in the presence of God if we're sinners. We just cannot. The Day of Atonement ritual, the sacrifice of the one goat pictured the payment for sin. Okay, so, that was, so that's when it talked about the first goat the payment for sin when um when we talked about in the verse um the second outline which which was the sacrifice that i had read let me read it again um where was i at i'm sorry let me read it again it was um where it says The goat's blood was taken to the most holy place, the tabernacle for the atonement. Jesus' blood was offered on the offer of the most holy place in heaven, securing atonement for all who believed. The first goat, um, when we talked about the, the first goat, was the goat um, that was the payment for sins. And, of course, the second goat we know, when we talked about the bull representing Jesus, was the one who paid for our sins. And so the, the, um, the goat pictured the payment for sin the release of the scapegoat picture the removal of sin remember i said one was for the payment of sin and then the other one was for the removal of sin together they pointed to the great truth that jesus christ had both paid the penalty for our sin and had taken away our sin and his death so that's awesome so he was he, he jesus christ was the the complete he was complete in that he only it, only him only one person complete the goat and the scapegoat the one that um, was the payment for sin, and then the one that was take away the sin. And Jesus Christ was both. And so in this lesson, God's forgiveness and his holy requirement requirements are balanced perfectly in Leviticus 16 chapter. We see his forgiveness in his specific dealings with Aaron, right? His allowance of the scapegoat and his atoning provision for the high priest himself. God's holiness is also on display in the Day of Atonement as indicated by the importance of complete obedience to God. As we seek to live out our faith, God's forgiveness and His holy standards give us much-needed guidance and assurance. So let's thank God for this Day of Atonement, um, a day that God allows for the sins of the people to be forgiven so that we can live with God, so that we can be forgiven and that our sins can be forgiven. Um, sin away but remember that does not give us the right to continue to sin because oh i believe in jesus my sins are forgiven my sins are gone away um your sins are ever before you god does not forget now he forgives you but he doesn't forget we serve a loving awesome god let's try to be obedient and show god that we love him by being living sacrifices we need to be to present our bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable to god 
And that's just the right thing to do. It's the reasonable service. That's just the right thing to do. So I just um, pray that you're helped through this lesson. You understand what the Day of Atonement is. Um, and also that we serve a loving and awesome God who loves us so much that he will go to any um, steps just for us, just to be forgiven, just to be, just to show us that he loves us. So may God bless you and keep you is my prayer.